Okay, we are working on lesson 16, mouse input. And the question of the day is, what are more ways that the computer can react to user input? So the vocabulary, conditionals, those are the if statements that we've already seen, statements that only run when certain conditions are true. And here's our new code. We've already learned key went down. Now we're learning key went up, mouse did move, mouse down, mouse went down, mouse went up, sprite visible, and we've been working with if else. So I'm not going to do the prediction with you, but let's read the questions. What happens when you press the space bar? What happens when you don't press the space bar? And I'm going to look at the code. So you have if key down space. Okay, so this you are learning the else block. Um, so if key down space. It looks like the scale is going to the balloon scale is going to increase. So the balloon size is going to increase. Otherwise, OK, otherwise the balloon's going to shrink. And I'm looking at the plus sign for increase in, increasing in size and the subtraction sign for decreasing. So if the space bar is being held down, the balloon will get bigger. Otherwise, if it's not held down, it's going to get smaller. <clears throat> Okay, so on exercise four, I skipped the video on exercise three, but you guys need to watch it. You have to watch it. I can't say that enough. So exercise four, reverse the gears. These gears already spin in one direction when you press the space bar. Now you'll want them to spin the other direction when the space bar isn't pressed. Do this. Make the gears spin the opposite way when the space bar is not being pressed. So just like in that exercise two prediction, we're going to need to reverse the operator sign. So this is minus plus plus. You're going to need to make an else statement right here by clicking this plus sign. And now what do you do? Think about this. I just told you you're just going to need to reverse these signs. So look, what I'm going to do, coder's best friend is copy and paste. I'm going to copy this, move it down here. And now what? Now what do we do? We just change these operators, okay? So this needs to be addition, this needs to be subtraction, and this needs to be subtraction. I go back to show blocks, and reset it and run it. And now they're spinning, but if I hold down the space bar, they go that way, okay? Okay, exercise five. Here is the same program, but with one small difference. Do this. Read the program carefully, especially line 13. So guys, they're literally giving you the answer to figure out how to control the gears. Run the program and test whether you are correct. Make the gears spin the opposite way when there is no user input. All right, let's look at line 13. Okay, so if mouse down. So probably if we click, yep, if we click, it does something. How to control it. run the program and test whether you were correct make the gear spin the opposite way when there is no user input so guys this is the same thing same thing as last level honestly I, i'm not going to give you the answer you have to do the same thing we did in level four okay you click here and put this code back in the else statement so do that for lesson exercise five so look i literally did the same thing as last level literally OK, that's all you do for exercise five, the exact same thing for exercise four. OK, mouse clicks. Here's a program that drops a balloon down the screen. Make the balloon go up and down according to whether the user is pressing the mouse. Do this. Add code that checks whether the mouse is being pressed. Move the balloon up if the mouse is down. Otherwise, move the balloon down. So if the mouse is down, move the balloon up. Otherwise, move it down. So I think this is the code that is making it move down. Yes, it is. Um, so we want an if-else statement, guys. That's what this whole level is all about. We want an if-else statement. And this is going to go in the else. Otherwise, I don't know why they didn't just say else. Otherwise, move it down. This is what's making it move down. So that's what else is. So we are literally copying, pasting, and we're going to change this operator to subtraction. 
Okay. And now what goes here? It says, it tells you what to put right there. Okay. If the mouse is down. If mouse down. Okay. If mouse down. And I think you have to put like left. Yeah, left click is what we want. So see when I click, it moves up. I hold the mouse down, it moves up. So that's all you got to do for this level. Okay, exercise seven, world.mousex. This program uses an if block to shake the blender when the mouse is on the left side of the screen. Let's look at it. Okay, okay, so when the mouse is on the left side of the screen, this blender shakes. Otherwise, on the right side of the screen, it doesn't. I like that they're doing this. Do this, run the program to see how it works. Add an else statement to make the mixer shake when the mouse is on the other side of the screen. Oh, the mixer. Okay, this is the mixer. So when it's on the right side of the screen, the mixer shakes. Cool. Uh, and guys, copy and paste. I can't say it enough. We are just going to copy and paste. Um, okay, so we added the else statement. I think we're all we're going to do here, I think, is we're going to change the blender to mixer and we're going to have to change these random numbers because this position is related to these numbers so this position for the uh, mixer is going to be related to those numbers too so let's figure that out so we're going to say mixer mixer look listen these numbers are related to the x position and these numbers are related to the y position so let's look at oh okay so all they did was subtract and add five to the blender's x position and they subtracted and added y to the y position so 295 305 95 105 so let's look at the Okay, so this for a mixer, it's going to be 295, 305 for both of them. So 295, 305. Oh, and it's already perfect. Okay, so that's all you got to do there. And so let's see. Boom, it's shaking over here. And now this is shaking. Perfect. Okay, so now let's take a look at exercise 8A ladybug walk this ladybug should only move when the mouse is near the bottom of the screen you're going to use a conditional to make sure the ladybug only moves when the mouse is near the bottom of the screen do this use an if block to check whether the position of the mouse world dot mouse y is below a certain point add code using the counter pattern to increase bug dot x to make it move the bug should only move if the mouse pointer is near the bottom of the screen. So I don't really remember how to do this, but this is exactly what we just did in exercise seven. So right click on exercise seven and open this link in a new tab. Okay, so I'm back on the code for exercise seven. And the reason is because they are doing the same concept in seven that we need to do in exercise eight. It's just that in exercise seven, it's using world.mousex and splitting the um, screen into two based on the x position. So when it crosses this imaginary line in the middle, that's when things happen. Like if it's on the left side of that line, this happens. When it's on the right side of that line, this happens. So we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to have it so that when we cross this imaginary line, so when the mouse is on this half of the screen, the ladybug is going to move, but when it's on this upper half of the screen, the ladybug is not moving. So we're going to need this if statement. Um, I'm not sure if I can copy this across levels, but I'm going to try it. So move the cursor down and paste it in there okay so yeah so here's the thing in the other level we did 
world.mouseX. We're going to need to change that to world.mouseY. And this, this level might take a, a minute or two because I'm trying to figure this out. Um, obviously, we don't want Blender. We want Bug. And you know what? I think we're just going to need to... What is going on here with this draw sprites? We don't want that. We want that right here. Okay, this might be a problem. Hmm. I don't want here. Let me get this out of here. Okay, cool. All right, cool. That looks better. Hmm. The mouse should only move. You know what? I don't think... I don't think we do need the else block. So let me hit the minus sign. And all we're going to need, I don't like the draw sprites going right there. I want it right here. I think all we're going to need to do is put bug. We can delete this. Look, all we need here is a counter pattern, I'm pretty sure. Bug.x equals bug.x. What do you think? Is it plus or minus? Pretty sure it's minus. Whoops, that's bug.y. All right, so let's see how this goes. Okay, so we want to do the opposite. So we want it so that when the mouse is on the bottom half of the screen, it starts moving. So the only way we or the only thing we need to do is we need to change that to a greater than sign. And now, boom. Okay, so that's how you do that. And now I need to go to exercise 8B. Okay, moving on to exercise 8B, ghost moving with the mouse. In this level, you'll make the ghost move either left or right, depending on the position of the mouse pointer. In the example shown, if the mouse pointer is on the left, the ghost moves left. And if the mouse pointer is on the right, the ghost moves to the right. Do this. Write at least two if statements to check for the location of the mouse. Make the ghost move in a different direction for each mouse location. So I think I think we are going to do exactly the same thing we did in exercise 8A. So why don't you open that in a new tab? So I've opened 8A in a new tab, and I think what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this if statement and change the uh, Y here to an X. And let's see how that works. So copy that, and you're going to need to move your cursor down to here. And we need two if statements. So you're going to need to get rid of this because we're not doing bug. And you need two if statements. So post it both times. And I'm pretty sure we need to change this to X and this to X. And we're going to want one of these to be less than and one of them to be greater than. So the first one is greater than. Let's make this less than. And I'm going to go back to show blocks. And I think, let me figure this out because I only got a minute left on my video. Okay, yeah, so from here it's actually just uh, dragging and dropping. So let's get rid of this bug.x block and the uh, counter pattern with the minus sign and dot x will make it move to the left. So I think that means if world.mouse is less than 200, we want it to move to the left. And if it's greater than 200, we want it to move to the right. So I'm going to drag those in there and I think this should work. Yep. Cool. All right, so you're good on that. Okay, this is exercise nine. This I am not going to do this with you. I want you to do this on your own. Fix the program. This program should only shake the creature when the mouse is pressed, okay? You guys can do this on your own. You're going to need to look through the levels and copy and paste some code, probably. Always read the directions and read the code because they give you hints, okay?
So do that and turn this in.